can't, the government side can't direct the campaign side, which is what, which is what was happening. Yeah. My question is, does the government really know about it? Yes. I, don't, I mean, I don't, I guess. I mean, I assume. She did. She had to have known. We kick off our elections coverage with a hard-hitting investigation into the controversial governor of Oregon. Since becoming the accidental governor three years ago, Kate Brown's time in office has been plagued with scandals. We found an insider who told us stories of illegalities, improprieties, and just plain incompetence. And just so you know, later this month, we'll begin releasing investigations into Senate races across the country. You won't believe what our hidden cameras have exposed in this 2018 election cycle. What's, what's like illegal? Like what, what can't she do? That she, um, what we can't do is, uh, so like, and what she did. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can't, the government side can't direct the campaign side, which is what, which is what was happening, yeah. How so? Well, the, the chief of staff is the one that got fired. This is the same thing. Chief of staff got fired and got, got, was the one that, that uh, forced me out of the campaign. So like, that was my beef with them. Is no, it was not. The chief of staff wanted to run the campaign. Or wanted to be like, the chief of staff wanted to be the chief of everything. Wanted to, to run the governor's world. Whether it was government side or political side, they wanted to be one person in charge of everything. I see. So and her campaign. You can't really have one person in charge of everything because of the legal legal limitations on the time. Michael Kolink was Governor Brown's campaign manager in 2016. He believes the governor and her chief of staff may have broken the law when they fired him. Oregon law prohibits both the governor from soliciting the chief of staff to aid the campaign and the chief of staff from engaging in political activity using government resources during government work hours. Ironically, Governor Brown herself issued a new policy out of the governor's office in 2015 expressly forbidding such political activity even using more stringent language. This is a quote from the policy section of this internal operating policies, quote, office of the governor employees are expressly prohibited from using any work time or any state resources to conduct political activities. So then the question becomes, how did Kate Brown not know about this? My question is, does the government really know about it? I don't, I mean, I don't, I guess, I mean, I assume. She did. She had to have known. So, I mean, she's an attorney, right? She, she knows that your basic simple law of your government can't run your campaign side. Yes. I mean, that's why the last governor had to resign. We reached out to Lars Larson, national talk radio host based in Portland, Oregon, for his take on Michael Kolenk's revelations. I'm not surprised at all that Kate Brown has been cheating and we now have testimony from one of her former campaign managers that she was cheating. That's not actually a surprise. What is a surprise is to get Veritas to actually get it on tape so we can document the cheating because this woman has been a corrupt governor since she became governor, replacing a previously corrupt governor who had to leave office one month after his inauguration because of his corruption. Governor Brown herself has had a scandal-plagued administration, extensively reported on by Adam Angieski in Forbes magazine earlier this year. From questions about misuse of public funds to firing her chief of staff because of a conflict of interest issue. The same chief of staff who fired then campaign manager Kolink. How did I mean, how did you find out about like the whole you know, chief of staff had this oh, corrupt um, thing? The, the finance director flagged it for me. Uh, because, finance director? Yeah, because oh, of, uh, the yeah Tiernan flagged it and because uh, apparently as I as I found out at that point, they had tried to fire the had tried to fire this consulting company earlier, like not six months earlier, and the chief of staff totally put the kibosh on it. And the woman, the woman, more, the woman that tried to fire them was the person that hired me to come in, and she was let go from the campaign after they, she brought me in. So like it was there's all kinds of like red flags. Yeah, all kinds of red flags. And at that yeah. point I was I had already moved. The governor didn't know that the chief of staff was 
that would, would, we were forced to hire this person, and the chief of staff was making money off this. Oh, and she didn't tell Didn't her. know any of this. That's why she got fired. Oh, mm -hmm. she got fired? The chief of staff did. Oh, she did? Yeah, oh, she okay. did. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, this, uh, yeah it's it was all, it was all as yeah. They weren't going to fire her. I was going to say, that's... They fired me. <laughs> they were going to wait until it was nice and quiet. End mm -hmm. of the year. Transition. But that happened. I think that happens more often than not. That people don't disclose that. Low level, low level graft, low level corruption. That might not be illegal, mm -hmm. but it's not right. Kate Brown became governor without a real examination of her abilities and qualifications. But Colink on the inside learned very quickly that Kate Brown was a horrible manager and should not be in charge of anything, let alone be the governor of Oregon. I think she's done some low level corrupt stuff. Yeah. So you'll understand this because of your the micromanagement section. She's a really awful manager of people and, and operations and structures. Like she's just not a good manager. And she doesn't hire she doesn't hire good managers. So that's like one of her a fundamental problem that she has. When when I uh, when I got fired and then I went to go talk to the reporter, he was telling me that she's gone to campaign managers like this simply because of some of, some of the same problems that I was experiencing, which bad management, poor direction, you know, not, you know, being, not absent, but just not, just not being a good manager. And when you're running a state, you got to be a good manager, because that's all you're doing. Right, so it's like, you're, you're supposed to be a good leader, mm -hmm. and that comes down to managing people, managing the state. Mm -hmm. You can't manage people, you can't manage a whole state. That's exactly right. She should, probably should be governor. Yeah. Well, and, and she didn't. She didn't run for it originally. Like she was. Remember, she was secretary of state, and then the governor resigned, and she got made governor like overnight. So she was very much fish out of water. Another controversy that continues to swirl around the governor are questions concerning the misuse of public funds. Public records show the governor spent thousands of dollars of taxpayer money for questionable expenditures, including paying roughly $1,000 for a state police officer to accompany her while on a whale-watching kayak trip in Canada. She also paid for her personal law license with a state credit card, bar bills on New Year's Eve, and car washes. But, but it's so easy, though, like, sometimes I can imagine, like, you have, like, funding and you're like, oh, I'm traveling and you actually use the wrong card or yeah. whatever. Or, uh, yeah, it, it can like she had that. Like, it, the it can, yep, it can, it, 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 she did do that. Yeah, it happens. And it happens all the time. Did, have you heard anything on the ground about this misuse of credit cards? This is documented in black and white where the governor has spent not thousands, but tens of thousands of dollars on travel, hotels, meals, and other things to benefit her political campaign, all at taxpayer expense, all thoroughly illegal. When journalists requested the governor's official calendar through Brown's first 1,156 days as governor, some 4,000 items were redacted, including the four-day whale-watching kayaking trip. Okay. Was, what, what, was she, what did she not want to show? Oh, I don't know if it was, it wasn't anything specific, but uh, like, that was just the way, that's just the way any office operates. That's the way we operate in the VA's office. That's the way everyone... So you just wait till the last moment. You just wait, you just, you just, you use the system to your benefit. Like, if the law, if the law says 30 days, you do it in 30 days. If it says 60, you do it in 60. The governor maintains a public calendar, and that is a public record, and Oregon has one of the oldest and most comprehensive public records laws in America. You are not allowed as a public official to destroy public records, and yet what Open the Books managed to document is that Kate Brown not only had staff members destroy public records by removing things from her official calendar, more than a thousand items removed from that calendar so that people who wanted to look how much of her day is she spending on campaigning and how much of her day is she spending on the work of the governor of being the governor of Oregon? The answer was she had those things removed. So she destroyed public records. That's illegal. I, so it's hard um, because, you know, in that case, you're dealing with a, 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 a governor who thinks that they can do whatever. Um, it's really about how, I don't want to say how persuasive you can be. But it's about, you know what, it's about the campus. I think it's about the campus. That's the easiest way to put it. Like the, the, the staff takes some responsibility at the end of the day because that's just how it works. 
uh, right or wrong, but it's always it's always the candidate that's always f-ing something up. Mm-hmm. It's like being that's either being short sighted or thinking no one's going to find out or thinking they're above. I mean, to run for office, you have to be a narcissist at some level. According to Kolink, there was more than just the kayaking incident. She did something with Comcast where she got some money from them after she wrote a letter, and like it's like it's it's a uh, it, it was something in twenty. It was something earlier in her in her tenure, but she had written a letter for Comcast, and they gave her like a hundred thousand dollar check or something, <laughs> and it was just like it didn't look good, and it shouldn't look good, and she didn't do anything illegal, but the perception that you know that's a quid pro quo, like I'm going to write a letter of support for something, and then you're going to cut me a hundred thousand dollar check, it doesn't look good. Yes, she absolutely did that. Yeah, and it was before I got there, but I mean that type of thing. When you're, when you're trying to appeal to like working class people that don't have that money, they don't understand it, and that's why people don't trust Doesn't elected matter. officials. Period. Like, it's 100% going on. It's 100% going on. It's really discouraging. Even the people, even the people you love, are probably doing it to some level. President Obama just endorsed Governor Brown's re-election effort. After all that Colank told us. It's hard to understand why even Obama would do that. She doesn't seem like she's a good leader. No, she wasn't ready. Politicians must be held accountable for their actions, and that will be our mission over the next several weeks. The mainstream media has stopped doing the job and only offers us press release journalism. In a world of innuendo and accusation, we only report the things that we can hear and see coming out of the subject's mouth. It's a disservice to the public and a very dangerous trend what the mainstream media is doing. We at Project Veritas Action are trying to pick up the slack and you'll see over the next several weeks, hard hitting undercover investigations that will make an impact in a number of key Senate races. We've all seen the public spectacle, the behavior of our United States senators recently. But what we haven't seen is what these senators will say and do behind closed doors just to get elected.